There are many incredible things about Bitcoin, but one of them that isn't talked about all that much is the inheritance aspect. How do you safely and securely make sure those that you care about will have access to your monetary wealth when the time comes? Today, I'll be discussing that topic, and I warn you, this one might get slightly depressing. Something I dealt with for years, ever since I was a little kid, was the anxiety of death. The idea of this infinite unknown would hit me, and I didn't know how to escape from under its oppressive weight. Well, it wasn't until I was much older that I realized that running from what I was scared of was not the best strategy, because as long as I ran, it kept on chasing me. So one day, I don't know why, I turned around and faced it. And ever since then, that is exactly what I do. I mention this because death is a topic that a lot of people would rather avoid, but it is something that we will all have to deal with in one shape or another. Today, I'm going to be going over a thread shared by the BTC therapist where he talks about this exact thing and how Bitcoin relates. He says, How can the unexpected death of your father lead to building a Bitcoin company? Time for a thread. Author, Jake, BTC advisor. On the 1st of January 2009, my father died. He had a totally unexpected heart attack at the age of 48. It was horrible. I grieved. I cried. I took drugs. I drank. I did everything a 20-year-old would do. Thankfully, time is the greatest healer. I now look back at that day as the first day of my Bitcoin journey. A bittersweet moment, if ever there was one. Unless you're a hermit living completely alone in the woods with, I guess, a Starlink so that you can access YouTube videos so that you're able to watch this, there's a really, really good chance that you know somebody, personally, maybe even deeply care about, that will leave this earth. Their soul, their being, however you want to term it, will leave this mortal realm and go who knows where. Everybody has their own ideas about what takes place after we pass on. But the topic of death will hit us in one form or another. And if you own any amount of Bitcoin, then you're going to want to be able to pass that on to those that you love and care about. Turns out, my father was a wealthy man, so I received an inheritance in my mid-twenties. I then had a problem. How do I protect my wealth long term? This took me on a journey. Jake is probably somewhat of an anomaly, but not so much if you're in the Bitcoin world. What's an anomaly here is that somebody in their mid-twenties, probably still grieving from the loss of his father, had this inheritance and decided to do something wise with it as opposed to YOLOing it on a bunch of trips and adventures and experiences around the world because I'm in pain and oh, I deserve this. No, no, he did the smart thing. He asked himself, okay, I have this money, what now? I became an investor. Over the last decade, I've owned all manner of assets, including bonds, currencies, equities, and physical real estate. Some of these investments were a success. Some were an utter disaster. All of this experience led me to Bitcoin, which I now believe is the most important family wealth protection tool ever available to mankind. We are currently at the tip of a massive iceberg. We're looking at an ice cube in your drink compared to the mountain that is coming. And I mean in terms of options and things and accessibility that people will have. Cash App is looking to build a hardware wallet that will bring accessibility to so many people. The development on Bitcoin is only just beginning. And as more people learn about Bitcoin, it'll bring in more ideas. More ideas mean more options and everybody benefits. I've reallocated my portfolio, so now I am about 90% Bitcoin out of my investable assets. And here he's got a picture of, I guess maybe it's just an, uh, uh, a suggestion from an investor or something. I'm not sure because this clearly doesn't show any amount of Bitcoin let alone 90%. Maybe this is what your average Joe Schmo down at the office, investor guy, the bobs at the office will tell you, oh yes, yeah, so this is what you should do. This is a diversified portfolio example. And maybe at one point in time, that was a great idea because you wanted to have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You don't know what's going to pop off. So hey, having a little bit in there, there sprinkled around in case want something just goes to the moon. That's a great idea. But as Savedine Amos commonly says, and many people do, this entire system, this dirty, disgusting fiat system where people are forced to learn about all these things if they want to make educated guesses at best, and that's really all you can do is make educated guesses, is 
terrible. It's horrible for your psyche, your mental health, and the time. For, I, how, who has the time to research all these different markets and bonds and cap, small cap, large cap? Who has time for all that? Nobody. You've got a full-time job. You've got a family. You've got interest. Probably not that. Maybe some people, but not everyone. And if you want to have retirement money, this is what you have to do? Forget about it. What you really need is something like, oh, what's this? Bitcoin? Yes. It just is what it is. The best store of value, the best asset that humanity has ever seen. Jake continues, I had to learn everything about Bitcoin. What is it? Why is it important? How can I trust it? Who can teach me? I had to actually sell assets, get cash into a physical bank account, then navigate the path via an exchange to sell custody. A perilous process at best. You may have done this yourself. Maybe you had some amount of your wealth in stocks or bonds and you went, hmm, this doesn't seem like such a good idea. Now that I've looked under the hood a little bit, I've seen behind the curtain and I have an idea of what's going on and I don't like what I'm seeing and Bitcoin is the solution to all of these ails. Maybe I should get into that. Well, that's still a process. You can't just snap your fingers and get all of your money out of this and into that. So that is a multi-step process for sure. And some people just say, eh, whatever, it's too much work. But those of you subscribed to this channel, you're paying attention. You know what's going on and you did the work. That's why you're here. Back to the thread, which led me to building Bitcoin with Jake. Along the way, I am so grateful to have met Peter BTC Advisor, who, as we have seen on this channel multiple times, Peter Dunworth, great fellow, a financial advisor, well ahead of the curve, who had built a collaborative custody product to help high net worth investors manage their multi-signature Bitcoin vaults. With his help, I now sleep soundly at night, safe with the knowledge that my Bitcoin will pass to my loved ones if ever I was hit by a bus. So, like my father before me, I have planned for the what if scenario. What happens to your Bitcoin if you get hit by a bus tomorrow? No, really. What happens to your Bitcoin if you get hit by a bus tomorrow? Without a solid answer to this question, sleep can be fretful. Excitingly, this experience has now evolved into us creating the BTC Advisor, a new business of which I am now a partner and equity owner, which is helping investors all over the world. Feel free to reach out to at JakeBTCAdvisor if you have any questions about how to secure your family's Bitcoin and wealth into the future. As the value of Bitcoin goes up and to the right with more and more people understanding exactly what this incredible technology is, then your need to be able to pass it on safely and securely also will go up. Get some help coming up with a plan with how you will do that because it just might end up being one of the most important and impactful things that you do in this lifetime.